Help support the companies that support our community. So the blank I started with was three inches thick and 10 inch square. So I went ahead and cut the corners off on the chop saw and then drill the hole down in the center. So I used the worm screw in the chuck to mount this to the lathe. So this is just a beautiful piece of maple. It has some great color and figure in it. And I was really excited to, to start turning it. So it is a little bit soft. So I went ahead and started out using a bowl gouge. So I just started from the bottom there. So this is the side that's going to have the tenon on it and just started work on my way through cleaning off material and getting it trued up. And at this point the lathe is running about 400 RPMs. Once I get those corners trued off I'll crank it up to about a thousand or 1200. After I got it true, I went ahead and turned the lathe speed up and then started shaping the outside of it. So I'm working from the bottom and just cleaning off a lot of material quickly to get that off of there so I can actually do a final shape on the outside. So once I have the majority of the material off, then I start doing the final shaping and the final cuts. So a lot of people ask me, you know, why I switch back and forth between the carbide and, and gouges. And it's because both of them do certain jobs better. And as far as softwood, the gouges do much better than the carbide. Um, Ingrain the carbide does better. It's so I go back and forth. So this wood, it didn't seem that soft, but it's it was a little bit softer than than I like it as far as going with the carbide. So I w went with a bowl gouge, and you're gonna you'll see here in a second. So I'm just doing the final shape, and I'm going nice and slow and trying to get a nice clean cut with this. And it, although the blank seemed pretty pretty uh, solid, it, it really wasn't. And so what I did is I went from the bottom, made nice, smooth, clean cut. I sharpened my tool. I tried going from the top down <laughs> to get a clean cut. I tried a sheer cut. None of them would work. It, it's just too soft a piece of wood. So there's a couple things you can do. You can stabilize it. Um, you could use a thin CA to fill it in um, or even like epoxy. So at this point right here, I'm ready to give up because full disclosure, this is the second bowl blank that I grabbed and the other one was the same way. I, this one felt a little better. So I thought, Robin and I were turning, I'm turning it and she's filming. She goes, let's just grab another one. So I grab it and it is exactly the same way. It's just tearing the grain apart on it and you could sand it but it's it's just gonna it's not gonna be smooth so robin said you know what this would probably make a really good teaching video <laughs> explaining all of that so there are some things you can do when you have a piece of wood like this like i said a thin ca soak that in there to stabilize it a little bit 
um, probably the best thing to do is using like cactus juice and a and a vacuum chamber to stabilize the whole blank um, before you even start. But I just thought about it. We would uh, Robin and I were talking about it, and she goes, "Let's just finish the whole thing, and you can show them exactly." everybody what exactly what was going on so i went ahead and made a recess just like i was going to do if i was going to finish it and the problem with leaving it punky like this um and finishing the whole piece is even if i would have sanded the outside of it when i go to to turn the inside of it you can't sand out all those little it's it's literally just kind of ripping the grain out so it goes in so deep you wouldn't get a you know a decent wall thickness it would be uneven and it's kind of flaking off on the top of it too so just kind of i'm probably gonna throw this piece in the <laughs> in the fireplace even around the edge of it too you can see some of the pieces that just kind of kind of fell off of it it's very odd because the blank when i first started it was not it didn't feel punky it didn't it wasn't light um so it was just a just kind of an odd piece that was that was really soft so once i got it turned and everything there are some spots on it where i can actually like you know just push my fingernail right into it so it's not good but i went ahead and went through the whole process changed the jaws on the chucks or jaws on the chucks used the expansion mode and went ahead and cleaned out the inside of it and I'll, at the end here, I'll show you some pictures of some close-ups of the actual grain. And yeah, I tried a couple different techniques, um, you know, going from the bottom, going from the top, uh, shear cut, and it just would not get a, get a clean cut on it. And I, as far as like cleaning out the inside, I just went through the whole process like I would if it was a regular bowl, cleaned out the majority of it. And then even, you know, I knew it wasn't gonna wasn't gonna make it but I did the same thing it went from the top of the rim nice slow even pass riding the bevel all the way down and it it just will will not uh, get a nice finish on it All right, there we go. So I will put some close-up pictures here of just the grain and how it's it's just torn out of it. You can see kind of on the rim too where some pieces have just like flaked off, just like that. So yeah, it's, um, it, you know, I tried several different things to get it to, to cut smooth and it just wouldn't do it. So there are, like I said in the, earlier, there's some things you can do with the thin CA, um, stabilizing the blank. Um, but it just, at this point, when, you know, I could sand the outside of it fairly smooth, but where it's really soft, it has those really soft spots, it's going to be wavy. And then when you get to the inside, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to go down. It's not going to feel right. Um, so something like that is, um, like even with the thin CA glue, you know, once you get the shape of it, then soak it down with the thin CA and then do another pass on it to kind of clean up that, that rough spot spots on it. Because it will still, even if you soaked it down with the thin CA, you're still going to see all the little pits in it where, where it ripped the grain apart. So I think the best thing to do would be stabilizing it before you even turned it. If you have any suggestions, uh, please leave them below in the comments. Um, yeah, the, those are the, the two things I could think of that, that would probably, you know, help with the, with a piece of wood like this. It's um, It was just beautiful, had some spalting, lots of great colors. Like I said in the video too, full disclosure. So this was the first one. So I had this one all turned. Same thing on this. I was trying to get a nice, smooth, clean cut, and it was just ripping the grain out in a few spots on it, and I could not get a clean cut. I unscrewed it ran out they were both from the same same place and we got them at the same time and so that's you know but they you know when it was in the blank form it seemed really nice i didn't think i was gonna have any problem with it but live and learn right i know there's a t-shirt out there it life's too short to turn cheap wood so 
<laughs> there you go. If you could stabilize it though, it would be, an, but either one of them would just be amazing. That one I might still be able to save. I could stabilize that because I didn't clean out the inside, but like Robin and I were talking, it was just, it's a good, you know, teaching video explaining about, you know, so the, you know, punkiness of wood and it tearing out on you because it's, uh, it's, it's not fun. All right. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, so we, last month, uh, we did a couple of, not last month, we're still in this month, uh, did like uh, three club demos. So again, if your club's interested in a demo, we do do them free on any of the Niles products. And I'm more than happy to do that. Just email uh, through the website and we can get something set up. Already have another one lined up uh, for uh, in November. All right, hope you enjoyed the video and hope you learned something. Like I said, if you do have any more suggestions, please leave them below in the comments. All right, we'll see you next week.